Okay, this is me trying again to come to you live for this Blue Planet 2 English lesson. I do hope that you're receiving this. I've just had some technical problems, so give me the thumb up and say, yes, I can see you and I can hear you and everything is good. And if everything is good, then I will continue on with this lesson. If it's not good, however, then I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, okay, I'm getting no messages, so I'm going to kill the stream and try again. Hi! <laughs> okay, this is my third attempt coming live. My name is Anna English. This is English Like a Native. Hopefully you're getting this and this is not going to be a complete waste of my, my whole day. I've had hiccups all day. I couldn't film, tried all afternoon, was no good. And this is my third attempt to come live having some weird connection problem. Okay, hopefully you're all with me now. So if you're just joining me and wondering what's going on, we are doing a live lesson all on the vocabulary and phrases that I heard while watching Blue Planet 2 with the incredible presenter who is also a national treasure here in the UK, Sir David Attenborough. Now, while watching this incredible program that's all about life under the ocean, um, I realised there was lots of words and phrases used that were quite advanced and I thought they would be great to sit and go through some of them with you and then maybe when you go and watch it, or if you go and watch it again, if you've already watched it once, then you'll get a little bit more out of it. So, here we go. I'm going to start from scratch. Um, in case you missed the dreadful start to this lesson. So we have, first of all, animals, animals that were covered. So there are a couple of animals covered um, and we had bottlenosed dolphins, bottlenosed dolphins. Those are Z sounding S's, bottlenosed dolphins. Now a group of bottlenosed dolphins, and if you don't know what they look like, they look like this. A group of bottlenose dolphins is referred to as a pod. A pod. Okay, um, so a pod of dolphins is a group of dolphins. Um, lots of people saying they can't hear me. I wonder why. My, um, my microphone is on and everyone is saying they can't hear me. <laughs> okay, if you can hear me then say you can hear. If you can't hear me, then maybe your volume is turned down. Um, but let me carry on anyway while I'm waiting for you to respond to that question. The other animals we saw were sea otters. Sea otters. Now, otters, when I was a little girl, were my favourite animal. And I'm just going to show you a picture of an otter right here. This is an otter. Oh, are they cute? Cute little otters. Okay. Um, I love it when they lie upside down like this and float. Um, and there was one yesterday on the program who was lay on his back, floating, rubbing his own head like he was giving himself a massage. It was so adorable. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed watching the otters. Other animals that were um, that were followed during this particular program were the orcas. Now orca is And if we refer to whales plural, like this one, it's exactly the same pronunciation as the country Wales. Wales. Okay. So then we also have humpback whales. Humpback whales, which are a little bit bigger. And oh, one of my favorite animals to watch last night actually was the walruses. Walruses. It's a little bit of a mouthful and the L is pronounced. Some people may not pronounce it because it's so much of a mouthful, but we do pronounce it walruses, a walrus and walruses. Okay. And then we also have polar bears. So um, if you're not sure what a walrus is, let me show you now. You get them up on the old Google search. A walrus. So you can have a look. Wow, look at these. And a walrus, these these are these are tusks, I think. These long teeth, we we refer to them as tusks. 
They're incredibly long, aren't they? Look at those ones. Wow. <laughs> they do um, batter each other with them as well. Like, get out of my way. Arrgh. They hit each other <laughs> with their big, big teeth. Okay, um, I'm still having a few problems, but I, I'm just going to go with it. I'm just going to go with it. Um, so, we have um, words. Words that I heard that I thought um, you may or may not be aware of. So, um, if you don't know these words, then do make sure you make a note of them and try to use them um, in the coming days. It's always good to um, improve and expand your vocabulary. Um, so, we have the first word and it's the word console. To console someone or something. If you console, then um, you are making someone who feels sad and disappointed feel better. You comfort them and you give them sympathy. And just so you can see this written down, while I just uh, kick somebody out here, um, just so you know, I do not put up with trolls, so you can get out of here. Um, so, yes, console. Have you consoled anyone recently? Um, I've had to console one of my friends recently. It's had a, a bit of a bad time, so I was there to comfort and sympathise with her and make her feel better. Have you consoled anyone recently? Do feel free to try and write a sentence using this word. Um, so then we also have the word elders. Elders is another way of talking about an older person, especially one that you respect. So someone who is respected in society, if they're older, then you might refer to them as an elder, an elder. So we, we were told as, as youngsters to respect your elders. Respect your elders. Okay, I will. Um, so Ella, who is one of my patrons, is here in the patron Skype room. And Ella says, um, you always comfort me, Anna. Thank you, Ella, that's very kind. Um, so you can use the word console. Um, Anna, you console me when I feel bad. You could use it in that way. And that's nice to hear. So um, elders, I hope that you respect your elders. Okay. And um, Nolia, Nolia has said, I have consoled my online friend today. Excellent. Perfect use of the word console. Black Flower says, well, I don't know how to console people. Um, it's generally quite easy to console people. It's just listening to them, being there for them and making them feel better, telling them a joke or giving them a hug, making them a cup of tea, that kind of thing. Um, all right. So elders was the next word. And then after that, we have juvenile. Juvenile. This is... Um, Quite a difficult one to spell, actually. I struggled spelling this one. Juvenile. Juvenile. A juvenile refers to a young person or animal, in this case, who is not yet old enough to be considered an adult. So maybe if you're 14 years old, you might be considered a juvenile. You're not really a child, but you're not yet an adult. You're a juvenile. Although I would say if you're talking about humans, people... Um, juvenile is a phrase that's normally used in court or in a legal sense. Um, normally, if we're talking outside of the law, then we're talking about children or teenagers. But juvenile is another word to be aware of. All right, Ella, what are you saying? Um, elder reminds me of the elder wand from Harry Potter. <laughs> yes, exactly. It is called, it's called that, not like that. You say it's called that in English. Oh, sorry. Is it called that in English? I grew up watching it in German. Um, yes, I think they do call it the Elder Wand. It's been a while since I saw Harry Potter, but yes, I think it is. So, is it correct to say um, to an adult that he or she looks juvenile? Um, yes, you can say that. Um, if I think that someone's behaving quite childish, so if I think an adult is behaving like a child and I want to tell them off for it, I could say, stop being a juvenile or stop acting like a juvenile. And it would hold more weight than if I say, stop acting like a child. So juvenile, it, it is used in that kind of authority way because it's um, associated with the law. Okay. So 
The next one on the list is the word tropical. You've probably heard this. Now, tropical, if something is tropical, it comes from, or it is, the area between the two tropics. So tropical refers to things or a place um, between the two tropics. All right. Um, then we have the word determination. I have determination. I have determination to help all of you to improve your English. What are you determined to do? And the word determination, it's a great word. The word determination, which should be used on application forms, you should sell yourself as being a determined person. It's the ability to continue trying to do something, although it is very difficult. So if you're someone who gives up as soon as anything becomes hard, then you're not a determined person. But if you're applying for a job, um, then you should, if you have the skill, you should put yourself forward as being a determined person. You have determination. I'm a determined young man or I'm a determined young woman. And that means that you don't give up at the first hurdle. You fight on through for the things you believe in. Okay. Um, um, Abdil says, juvenile is like non-mature. Yes, and a non-mature, we actually say immature. Immature. So juvenile, you can use it to mean immature. You're juvenile. You're immature. Okay. So the next word on the list is accuracy. Accuracy. To have accuracy or to be accurate is to be exact or to be correct. Um, so if you say, oh, your name is Anna English from the YouTube channel English Like a Native, I'd say, yes, that's accurate. You are accurate in your description of me or in your identification of me. You are accurate. Um, and if you have accuracy, then you are in a state of being exact or correct. So you are accurate and determined. The next word, great word, is the word tra trajectory. Sometimes I struggle to say it, trajectory. And that's a hard j sound. I hear a lot of students saying this soft, like in French, j, but in English, usually this is a hard sound, j, so trajectory. The trajectory is the curved path that an object follows after it's been thrown or shot into the air. So if I throw something and we watch it fly through the air, this path that it takes is its trajectory. Okay, so you could say um, he fired the arrow and it followed an unusual trajectory or um, um, an unpredictable trajectory. Okay, so the path that it took was weird, <laughs> unusual. Um, Black Flower says, I hope my English is accurate. Well, it certainly is in that sentence. Well done. Um, good. Okay. So, trajectory. Let's have a look what Ella's been saying here. Um, I feel like I'm a juvenile, though I'm theoretically an adult. So make sure you put in the article there. I'm an adult. Yes, very good. I'm determined to become a professional singer. Yes, and you're wonderful. So I'm sure you will be one day. Never give up. Um, Nolia says, um, it has to be a curved path for it to be called a trajectory? No, it's any path, so just a path. I mean, normally we think about curved. Does it need to be curved? Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Look up trajectory in the dictionary and if it offers um, one definition that doesn't use the word curved or arc or arched, then trajectory can mean any path that an object takes. Um, I've heard it used in lots of ways, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's correct because natives always make mistakes. So the next word on the list here is evaporates. Evaporates. Now, if something evaporates, basically it's a liquid that changes into gas. So if you boil the kettle, if you boil the kettle, if you boil water, some of the water will evaporate, turn into steam. Okay. And um, yes, nice and easy, evaporate, evaporate. The other word is condenses. 
if something condenses, it reduces down. So you might use the word condenses in um, in cooking, for example. So if you're wanting to make a sauce and it's very, it's um, very wet, it's very, what's the word? Um, you need it to become thicker. It's very, it's a very thin sauce and you want a nice thick sauce. So you need to reduce it down, you need to condense it, okay? So condenses, I'll show you how it's spelled. Condenses. And then this word, I love this word, gigantic. It was gigantic. This morning, I ate a gigantic breakfast. I didn't really, but gigantic. It's a great word, it means big. So if you um, haven't heard that word before, write it on your list and the next time you say something was big, very big, don't use big, don't use large, don't use huge, use gigantic. It's a great word, gigantic. Okay, so the next word on the list is the word not. Now, interesting, normally a knot is um, is a, the tying of a rope or um, a, a tie around your neck. You put a knot in something, you might have knots in your hair. But knots can also refer to speed when we're talking about water. So if something is traveling through or on top of water, then we talk about the speed in knots rather than miles per hour or kilometers per hour. We talk about knots. Um, so you'll say, how fast was the ship sailing? It was sailing 10 knots. It was doing 10 knots. Um, nice and easy. So there you go. And then this is a great word, formidable, formidable. And this is, if something is formidable, it's causing you to have fear or respect of something or someone because that thing or person is large, powerful or difficult. So if someone is maybe huge or maybe they're very powerful, they are formidable because you fear them and you respect them because they're large, powerful, or because they're particularly difficult to deal with. Or it could be a mountain. You could say that the mountain that you want to climb is a formidable mountain because it looks like it's difficult. It's very large. It's going to be a difficult climb. It's formidable. Okay, something to be feared and respected. The ocean can be formidable. Are you formidable? <laughs> Okay, so um, the next one, oh, someone's asking, what's the difference between evaporate and vaporize? Hmm, I have a feeling that vaporize is what you do to something, you vaporize it, and evaporate is the act of it turning into gas. Let me have a look here. Vaporize meaning, let's have a look at an exact definition. Da, da, da. So to vaporize something is to convert it into vapor. So why is that different to evaporate? Because vapor is gas, right? It's a very good question. And this is what I love about teaching on this channel is that I also get to learn as well. Eva, evaporate, we're learning together. Um, evaporate versus vaporize. Okay, this is gonna be a long read. Uh, all right, I'm gonna, so I think we all have to look that up. That's gonna be a very long read, um, but good question. I'm glad you posed it because I don't know the answer. Um, okay, so um, the next, where was I? Where was I? The next word on the list after formidable is the word camouflage. Great, great word. Hard to pronounce if you haven't heard it before. Camouflage, camouflage, camouflage. So camouflage, you can wear something camouflage or an animal can be camouflaged and it's the way that the colour or shape of an animal or plant appears to mix with the natural environment to prevent it from being seen by attackers. So basically, if something is camouflage, it's hidden. You can't see it because it blends into the background. And many of us will wear, if we're maybe camping or hunting or something, would wear a camouflage coat, camouflage trousers. And we'll hide or pretend to be trees and bushes. Just like that. <laughs> okay, we're getting there. We're nearly down to the phrases. So three more words. 
And the next word is the word residence. Residence. Um, a resident is a person who lives or has um, their home in a place. So if you live in a house, you are the resident of that house. If you live in a street, you are a resident of that street. If you live in a town, you are the resident of that town, okay? So whichever place you live in, you are a resident of that place, okay? Lovely. So um, then we have the word mating. Oh, matron. So the word mating refers to sex, but only sex that's practiced between animals. So you can't say that two people are mating. That doesn't work. Animals mate, people have sex. Um, of course, there's lots of other vocabulary um, to talk about sex for people. And I have covered that in another video called Sex Vocabulary, which you can find on this channel. Um, but yes, mating is what we talk about when we're talking about animals having sex. And the very last word on the list is the word bulbous. I love this word, bulbous bulbous. It's great. The word bulbous refers to a part of the body that is fat and round. So if I had a big fat round chin, then you could say Anna has a bulbous chin. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll let you see how it's written. Bulbous, bulbous. And they were um, following some fish that had really bulbous foreheads and bulbous chins. And that's how that word uh, ended up on the list. So, um, Nolia has an answer about evaporate and vaporize and says, I think eva eva evaporize, evaporate is when water boils and becomes gas and vaporize is when a perfume vaporizes. Hmm, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So vaporize might be when it becomes, yes, because of course vapor is not gas. Vapor is just lots of little beads. So you spray the vapor on you and, and evaporate is when it, liquid turns into gas, which rises. Ah, thank you very much. Now we know. Okay, great. See what we can achieve when we all work together. Um, okay. So Bulbous was the last word, great word. And just before we move on to phrases, I'm just gonna see what Ella is saying here. Hi, Ella. Um, will they ever use the word trajectory? Yes, so um, I use the word trajectory all the time actually, and I use it when I'm talking metaphorically about my life. So for example, if you're talking about you and your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, and perhaps you split up, you could say, we split up because we were both on different trajectories in life. He wanted to move abroad and, um, and, and have a family. And I wanted to stay in the UK and work for 10 more years before I had a family. We were on different trajectories. So we were on different paths. So I use trajectory in that respect quite a lot. So perhaps. Perhaps, it's definitely a good one to know. And you said, isn't camouflage only that army pattern or can it be any hiding pattern? So camouflage is anything that will help you to blend in with the, your environment. So if you, are, if you are near a brick wall and you wear an outfit that looks like bricks, then you are camouflaged. You're wearing a camouflage, okay? Hope that helps. So now let's move on two phrases. Now I'm going to, you're going to love some of these phrases. So, um, the first phrase is as far as we can tell, as far as we can tell. So if someone says as far as we can tell, oh no, here we go. If someone says as far as we can tell, they mean, um, that's as much as we know. So as much as I know right now, that's the truth. If you ask me, um, is the world round? Is the earth round? I would say, as far as I can tell, I don't know for definite because I haven't physically seen the world from space and seen that it's round. I've only seen pictures. So as far as I can tell, yes, that's the case. If someone is crying in the corner and you say, is that person upset? And I'd say, as far as I can tell, I think so. 
So it's like saying, I think so. I'm not certain, but I think so. That's as much as I know right now. Um, yes, so as far as I can tell, it's a good one. The next phrase is, for the sheer joy of it. If you do something for the sheer joy of it, then you're doing it because you love it. So I want you to try writing a sentence now that uses for the sheer joy of it or that uses as far as I can tell. Um, so for example, I might say, I sing for the sheer joy of it or I teach English for the sheer joy of it. You might say, Anna, why do you spend your evenings um, making cakes? I don't, but why do you spend your evenings making cakes, Anna? And I might just respond for the sheer joy of it because I love it for no other reason other than love. No other reason. So I want you to try now. Something you did for the sheer joy of it. Okay. Um, so the next one, the next one is something you ought to do. Ought is an interesting word. It's a difficult vowel. Or, or. This G is silent and the H is silent and it's just a T. Ought, ooh, ought. It actually sounds like it's spelt like this. Sounds like that, ought. If you ought to do something, it means you have a duty to do something. You are duty bound to do something. So if I am, um, if I am employed in a normal job, I ought to go to work on time in the morning. I am duty bound. I should. I'm supposed to go to work. I ought to go to work. Um, so it's something you ought to do. Um, is, as far as I can tell, like apparently, says Amal. Um, it's, it's more personal than that. It, you're just saying, as far as I know. That's as much as I know. Whereas apparently is just a little looser. Okay. Um, so the next one on the list of phrases is spur us on. If something spurs you on or spurs someone else on, it means it encourages them. It encourages them to continue. So if I'm running a marathon and I'm feeling tired and I feel like I can't do it, and then I think about why I'm running that marathon. I'm running that marathon to raise money for charity. You could say the thought of the charity and the people I'm helping spurred me on to finish the race. It spurred me on. So for example, my patrons, my wonderful patrons, and if you have signed up to be a patron again this month, um, thank you so much. But my patrons are the sole reason um, I continue. My patrons really do spur me on to continue making content for this channel. If any of you follow what I do um, via my YouTubing series on my other channel, if you know about how difficult it is to be a full-time YouTuber, you'll know that I find running this channel very hard. And if it wasn't for my patrons, I wouldn't be able to continue. I, I physically wouldn't be able to manage to pay the bills and be here and do what I need to do for you. So my patrons spur me on to continue making content for you. Okay? So try to use try to use one of these phrases in, in a sentence. Let's see what we've got. We've got Amanda says, as far as I can tell, Anna wants to share her English classes with everyone for the sheer joy of it. Perfect, Amanda. Really good. That's perfect. Um, let's have a look what Ella's saying in the patron room. Um, some just wrote in the live chat, you are wonderful, kiss me. <laughs> okay, um, you are maybe a good wife. I found it really funny. Yes, I would be a good wife. I am very good, I'm very good at looking after people. Um, Anna spurs me on to dream big. Perfect. Wonderful, Ella, well done. Um, okay. So the next one on the list, and this isn't a very long list, I promise you. So the next one on the list is take to the air. If you take to the air, it's very easy. It means that you fly. So a birds will take to the air. Or if you're paragliding, or if you're bungee jumping, or um, skydiving, you take to the air. It means you just literally jump into the air. Okay? So take to the air. 
Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. Strongwit has come come in and dropped a super chat of five euros. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Of course, as you know, um, for anyone who drops super chats and also for some of my patrons as well, any of the notes that I write for these lessons will be shared as a way of saying thank you. So you are entitled to a copy of those notes. Thank you. It's very kind. So take to the air. Then we move on to the phrase up their game. If somebody ups their game, it means they, they they suddenly start to work harder or try harder or do things better. You up your game. So for example, when I first started doing live streaming, my quality was bad. Um, I didn't have a good background. I didn't have a good microphone at all. I used to have the little earphones in. Um, my content wasn't well organized and I didn't know what I was doing really. And so you could say that Anna upped her game in live streaming. So Anna made, did a better job. She made it better. She made the live streams better. She upped her game. Have you had to up your game recently? Sometimes we have to up our game in order to keep our job. Or sometimes we have to up our game in order to win over the heart of someone we love. If they're not noticing us, we have to try harder, work harder. So you up your game. It's a great phrase. Okay. And the next one is the phrase stick together, which is what we do. I hope you think the same. We stick together. We work together as a community to help each other improve as human beings, but also in our language learning. Um, so we stick together and it's just a way of supporting one another. You can stick together physically. So in Blue Planet 2, the animals had to stick together to prevent themselves um, being vulnerable to attackers. So they, they would stick together, but you could stick together morally as well. Obviously, we don't see each other physically, but we stick together morally. And as a community, we help each other out. Okay, so then we have close in on. Close in. If you, if you close in on someone or something, it means you, you get closer to it. It almost seems like you're about to attack it. You close in. You get closer at that last moment to attack. So if I'm sitting in the middle of a meadow and there are some lions nearby that want to eat me, I'm sitting there and they're getting closer and closer. You could say they are closing in on me. <gasps> I'm scared because the lions are closing in on me. And when you use it in that respect, close is a Z sound to close in on. Okay. The next one is to take notice of, or sorry, take little notice of, take little notice of. Um, I use this phrase because um, sometimes when people use this, they do the word order wrong. So um, if you take little notice of something, you don't pay attention to it. You're not interested. If there was a bee flying around me zzz, and I ignored it, you could say Anna paid little attention. <laughs> no, Anna, Anna took little notice of the bee that distracted everyone during her lesson. Anna took little notice of the bee. Okay, so to take little notice of or to take no notice of, you could say that. Anna took no notice of the bee. Okay. Um, the next one, and we are coming to the end. There's only two more now. The next one is for good reason. This might seem like an easy one, but I just wanted to check it with you. Um, you could say he did it for good reason. Or you could say um, Anna stood up suddenly and walked out of the room. For good reason. So if I suddenly see a fire has started in the corner and I suddenly leave, I'm doing it for good. There's a Anna stood up suddenly and left in the middle of a live stream for good reason. So you don't need to say she had a good reason to do that. You just say for good reason and that works. Oh, and my live stream is being funny again. <gasps> oh, what am I going to do with this live stream today? Hmm. I do apologize. Um, we are near the end now. Anyway, okay, hopefully you're with me again. So the very last one on the list is four years in the making. 
Uh, at the end of the documentary, David Attenborough, Sir David Attenborough was saying, this, um, this documentary, this series has been four years in the making. If something is a certain amount of time in the making, it means that's how much time it took to create or to produce. So Anna, big YouTube star. I wish. Anna, big YouTube star was seven years in the making. So it took Anna seven years to be a YouTube star. I'm joking, I don't really care about being a YouTube star. I just want to make sure everyone can learn English. That's all. All right, my darlings, that is the end of our lesson. Um, Strongwit, thank you again for your Super Chat contribution. You will get a copy of the notes. Um, I also have to announce that because of all you wonderful people, I'm now at 10,000 followers on Instagram. Yay! Which means I can do things which I couldn't do before, which is great. Like I can connect to videos directly from Instagram. So thank you if you are following me on Instagram. And if you're not, come and join me. It's free. I do regular pronunciation practice on there. So And there's loads of English teachers doing great stuff on there. So come on over. Be part of the Instagram gang. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for being here. Do make sure you are a subscriber. And um, if you're interested in becoming a patron or getting involved in translating any of my videos then there are links for stuff like that down below da, 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 da. so go and check out those links loads of other helpful links down there as well including the link to blue planet too so go and check it out all right guys i'll stay in the chat room and answer some of your questions for a little while and then i must go and have some dinner all right lots of love from london have a good evening